Hey y'all, Chemology here to do today's exhibit. If you've been following along, I am recording myself a video a day talking about something that is interesting or relevant or important or going on for me for the possibility that my talking about it and then sharing it may have some positive potential or impact for you and or for me. I usually record from my creative corner. Today I'm outside in the yard sitting with my dying dog, honestly. Why do I keep saying honestly? I've said that a couple times on these videos. And that's part of the interesting part about these videos is that I say things that aren't me things to say. And I catch myself and then it's this whole imperfect thing, like doing the video and having as little editing as just having little editing, little to no editing, along with little to no planning. It's um it's been interesting. So anyway, if you don't follow me regularly, the dying dog thing is um Duder is 13 and we're just, you know, we're at that point of the process. I don't mean he's like literally, I just mean that he's been unwell for some time now and this is not what that video is about. <laughs> he's okay, all things considered, if that's starting to worry you. So today's topic, I had someone ask me to uh, make a request, which I thought was great. I really appreciated that, I liked that. I would love to talk about or you know, work on, why am I still messing with my hair? See, these are the things you don't know that you're doing until you're in front of a screen where you think other people are gonna watch you. I had someone request, it was in response to how, I think it was on my website hack, um, talking about that. And, oh yeah, it was about blinking my problems away. <laughs> That's the image I chose to go with that post. And the person's asked, um, will you speak to how to calm down or how to, you stay in the yard. That's Duck, the younger one. Speak to how to remain calm, calm yourself down. You know, thanks to not being in front of the computer right now, I can't see exactly what it was. Duck, stay, ah, ah, stay, come. This is not going well. There's a hole in the fence. I'm sitting in front of the fence, but you can't tell it's a fence because there's so much ivy on it. And Duck, I think is about to leave. Excuse me, one second. Duck, ah, ah, come now, come. Come now. Yes. Good boy. Thank you. And I'm back. <sighs> the point the request was about calm. There was something about anxiety in there. There was another thing about waking up and thinking thoughts, not good thoughts, being kept awake by not great thoughts. And I have what I, I would consider a lot of experience with anxiety. It was actually one of the things that was really big for me before I reckoned my life. I had very bad anxiety. It's exactly where the morning ritual stuff came from. I would wake up and just immediately be wrought with dread, anxiety. My anxiety was like heart, pal heart palpitation type anxiety and nausea and just general dread. I never did experience anything that I think would be considered a panic attack, but anxiety, man, it was hard. It was bad, um, not good. So I get you if that's where you are. I mean, I'm sure it's different for all of us, but, and, and I definitely empathize for anyone who says that they have that because it was such a bad thing, a bad experience, a bad thing to handle. I mean, people would say, what are you anxious about? And it doesn't necessarily have to be a thing. You're just, it's like a state that your body, I, could, I would describe it as a state your body gets used to doing when anything is lightly or bigly stressful. That's what I ended up, how I ended up describing mine. Because when someone would say what's stressing you out, it wouldn't necessarily be a thing, although I could at that time have plenty of things. So, um, thinking back to the time when I was first coming out of that, Mine really started in the morning, so I started with um, directing my thoughts first thing. And that's where the wake up and love part of that came from. I also did morning pages, which I got out of the artist's way, although I think I really don't do them the way that they are um, necessarily taught there. I've made it my own thing, but that's a process. But the thing I want to speak to the most as far as um, calming down when your thoughts are running amok, if that's what it feels like, the thing that I think 
I would say to try is um, meaning, meaning are you, can you slow down enough to see what you're saying in your mind and then basically debunk yourself? <laughs> like a lot of people say, go work out, go for a run, breathe. There's breathing exercises and I'm not sure all that shit works. And I say shit like loosely, meaning I can feel it when I'm not hiking. <laughs> so I'm not poo pooing the exercise part at all or the breathing. I mean, take a deep breath, you know, all that stuff. But the thing that I would say was unique and powerful to my experience and still is anytime I'm like start to, I call it awfulizing now, like I will awfulize something that's going on. If like if it's raining, it's now pouring. It's not just sprinkling. I've like made it a whole ordeal. So <clears throat> how to work out some, share some examples with you. What examples to use to share when I'm saying I basically do word replacement and um, not just word replacement, but I like, question my stuff to death and especially the negative stuff so if there's a problem going on with my house for example what did I just say maybe I'll say the house is falling apart well let's start with that like because when you say that severe stuff you're adding that kind of energy to it so even if you I've said that and you're like well my house is falling apart the pipes are leaking or the windows falling out and that was real for me last year um, the roof is leaking the whatever it is if you awfulize it meaning you say something that's more severe than what is actually going on you are making it worse for yourself so one of the first things I think you can do is notice what you are saying and make it more accurate Notice how whatever it is that you're saying in your head or out loud is not actually entirely true. You're awfulizing it and make it better by making it more accurate. So if you have just said the whole fucking thing is falling down, stop yourself and be more specific and say the window needs repaired. That's probably a leap. You probably can't even get that far. So the, the house is like just shit. The whole, the whole house is going to shit. Then be more specific. I have a leak in the roof. Um, I'm going to get away from the house part and try something else. Like, um, a common, I'm going to use just like a common saying next as to kind of demonstrate what I'm saying. Like she just ripped my head off again with the awfulizing. Like when there are some studies and stuff, <laughs> I don't like to reference very specifics or get like into the whole, it's only true if it's been taught type stuff. I'm sharing with you what has worked with me and it's a collection of stuff I've either seen, tried myself, heard elsewhere, got off someone else and made it my own, all the stuff. Um, she ripped my head off. That's not true. You're making it worse. And when we exaggerate, embellish to the negative side, it has the same effect as if you do it on the positive side. Like it make it enhances it. So de-enhance it and deconstruct it. Like ask yourself, stop saying like Kim, ask yourself some questions. We, that's probably coming up on the audio. Can you stop doing that, please? We got enough stuff going on. Ah, leave it alone. Thank you. <sighs> He's not ruining my video. Like, I could have had that thought. He's adding to it. He's being a little bit of a nuisance. He's a very sweet and nice pup. You know, like, I just, I didn't stop the whole thing and start over. I'm not going to do that. Uh... So I ripped my head off. Not true. She's, she was mean to me. Maybe not even true. Like what actually happened? She said what she felt. I didn't like it and it hurt my feelings, which will, I haven't put, shared this video yet, but it's about no one makes you anything. If you can try that on, no one pisses you off. You got pissed off. No one hurt you. You felt hurt about it. What you interpreted you gave the meaning of that was not nice or that was mean and therefore I am now hurt. My feelings don't, it doesn't feel good. All that's valid. And there's always an, another perspective that you can take. And if you take ones that I'm going to hold on to him because there's a car going by and he's taken to using the hole to escape to go chase cars. I really hope, I really hope, I try not to say hope. That's another word for placement that I often use. Hope um, is flat and a little wishy-washy. When you say hope, it's like, I hope you have a good day. Or that's bad because it's not. It's actually one of the ones I play with the most. I hope that I get the job. 
versus I trust I'll get the job if it's meant for me or I'm going to get the job if it's if it's if it works out or but I hope just like puts it out to somebody else's energy and um, just as kind of a disempowering thing overall hope is meant and built out to be this thing that we all need to have have hope have faith hope and faith are different I just lumped them together but um, just try that on too <laughs> I don't hope it gets better I trust I, I use trust as a replacement for hope a lot I trust that it's gonna work out um, I believe I imagine that you're gonna have a good day versus I hope you have a good day I don't really know what's gonna happen but I hope you do I imagine you're gonna have a great day just see like the words that we use add so much energy to our stuff so the best thing that I have for someone asking me like what do you do with anxiety how do you calm yourself down what can I use when I'm like just thinking all the awful thoughts just start with the first thought that you can observe and break it down. Break it down to how you're, it's not true. And maybe this works for me because truth and authenticity are so important to me that anytime that I can pull out like where I'm not being truthful or honest, meaning like I'm exaggerating something, it's really important to me because I really wanna be truth, authenticity, honest. And so anytime I'm not doing it with myself, it's a big deal. And I find that deconstructing that anytime I'm having a hard time really helps the situation um, let me know what you think I think I should apologize for all the distractions there's a lot of distractions in this video and I have committed to doing this imperfectly because if I did it perfectly I would go in there and I would edit it to death in a way that I do not think would be good for you or for me and I would probably have re-recorded it now it out of 20 minutes versus of 12 minutes of video to decide what is what and I'm just going for doing it sharing it so it could possibly reach someone who didn't get distracted by the fact that I said um 10 times and left to get my dog and all this other stuff if you struggle with anxiety and you want uh, my brain on it please reach out I would be honored to be asked to be a resource for you and I feel like I have really been there and I would be honored to be asked have a comment thought stand out anything I think all the stuff goes down there I would appreciate it thank you and shop for now